a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So there's certain mistakes that I always make when I'm out in the field. And what I want to do in this video is share 13 of them. And I'm in the amazing Faroe Islands. So we've just finished an amazing workshop here on the Faroes and we've had some stunning light. There's a few things that happened whilst we were shooting some of these things that happen quite often on photo shoots and what I want to do is share those with you. Some of them are related to camera, some accessories and some composition. They're really simple things, really simple mistakes that if you avoid can make a step change in your photography. So I've grouped them into three sections and the first set of these three sections it's just about your camera and your camera settings. So the first one of those is ISO. And I can't tell you how many times I've done this. Um, I still do it where I've been out the night before, maybe shooting some Astro or wanted a fast shutter speed. And then I've looked at my camera probably about 30 shots in and I've left it on ISO 6400 or 3200. So at the moment we're at this bendy road here. Last night we had it, we were out and we were shooting with just a, a slightly increased ISO. So what I did was check that first. And I've got a checklist of things that I can go through just to make sure I don't make those mistakes. So I put up all the checklists at the end of going through each section. So you've got that and it can help you improve and make sure you don't say, make the same mistakes as I do. Whilst I'm here, I just want to talk about this amazing composition of this, this bendy road. Now, I've been to the Faroes before, and there's two sections of bendy road, this one and one further up the hill. I've always photographed the one further up the hill, but this is much, much better. This is an amazing island. The composition sort of takes care of itself. So I'm going to take this with my um, Nikon, which I'm filming this with, and my drone and see what we get. But I'm just waiting for the light just to come on the road here so it just just adds a little bit more contrast to the scene and just by waiting for the shadows makes a big difference so i'll take this show you the shots and then we can talk about some more mistakes that i often make So whilst we're talking about leaving things on from a previous shoot, and there's two other things that you should probably check that you haven't left, and that is your aperture and whether you've left it on manual focus. So let me explain. So you may be shooting and you want to just get either a longer shutter speed or just that extra little bit of depth of field and you put it on F16 knowing that you're probably sacrificing a little bit of um, image quality, but you just want to have it the shutter speed a little bit slower. Maybe you don't have an ND filter or you want a little bit more depth of field. But when you get to your next shot, you should always check your aperture. It's the first thing I do whenever I get to a scene, I decide what aperture I want to put it on. And then I alter my aperture if I think I need to alter one of the other settings, like mostly the shutter speed. It should be the first thing when you get to a scene, what aperture do I want to put this, this on to, to get everything in focus that I need to get in focus or to get the things out of focus if you just want a shallow depth of field. And then the other thing is, manual focus now you won't believe just how many times that you know i put my camera on my tripod and then i flick it to manual focus sometimes i do it on my lens like you can on the nikon here you can just switch to uh, manual focus so what i'll do is i'll focus on the thing that i want to be in focus i'll switch it to manual focus maybe i'm doing a pano or maybe i just know that it's then fixed and i don't have to worry about it and then i forget to switch it back to or autofocus. So the other thing that I, I always do before I press the shutter, shutter button is just check focus. And then I always check focus after I've taken the shot as well. So don't forget those two things. Right, I'm going back to this beautiful scene. The buttercups are out and it's summer in the Faroes. This is amazing. So when we arrived in the Faroes, I'd, I'd actually been shooting with my long lens and my Fuji and shooting my kids. 
And when I do that, I usually shoot on JPEG, I don't shoot on RAW, and I just use one of the picture profiles that I really like. A, a Turner is really nice on the Fuji, so I don't have to do as much editing, you know, they're just snaps really. But the first probably 30 or 40 photos that I then took when I was here, I, I'd left on JPEG, so I took some amazing shots, and stupidly, I still do this, I'd left them on JPEG. So that's, that's the next top tip, is just don't leave your camera on JPEG. Check it, make sure you go and do these checks and, and make sure it's on RAW. Uh, I, I tend to shoot RAW and JPEG, so I've got both. You, you want to be shooting your landscape shots on RAW, you're going to get much better quality. You've got more opportunity to just do something with the data later rather than the camera, you know, actually putting a picture profile on the data. You get more dynamic range. You can also change the white balance, which is the final thing I want to speak about. And that is putting, not leaving your camera on auto white balance. And you might think, well, I can change the white balance after, but it's really important to choose a white balance. So when you're reviewing your photos, and I've said this many times before, that you can actually see what they look like and they don't change depending on the weather conditions. And that way you've got consistency in the color throughout the day. So I usually choose cloudy or sometimes shady, depending on what the conditions are like, but I leave it on that white balance throughout that whole particular shoot. So make sure you've checked that as well. So the weather this evening was looking so good and there was meant to be sort of a silver lining where we were meant to get some really good sun. So We've come out to see if we can just get the last night of sunset. I think a couple of the guys probably wanting to go back and have a beer, but we've got to get out, we've got to be out. Because if you're not out, you just no chance of getting it. So what I want to talk about in the composition section are just three things. And the first is the horizon. So there's no reason not to get the horizon straight when you're actually taking the shot. There's nothing more frustrating than getting back and then your horizon not being straight and then you having to use some of your pixels and maybe then you know really have an issue with some space on the left or right if your horizon isn't straight of course you can straight it afterwards but you can do it on your camera most of them have got a level that you can use so make make sure just check it it's really easy and especially if you're on a tripod where you're just taking your time a little bit and then the other thing to think about is just edge control you can see here that you know i've got these stacks here that are just on the edge distracting you don't want them or you want to include them so we can have a look at some photos now where you know maybe I've not thought about the edge control quite right and if I had have done I could have cropped in a little bit better and just improve the photo so just think about edge control what I like to do is go around all four corners and just make sure that there's nothing distracting you know I like to have big rocks in corners or you know simple things in the corners or lines from those corners leading the eye into the picture and then just go around the edges and just check there's nothing that's too distracting. You want to make something really simple. So if you can just check that, it makes a big, big difference. The third thing that you just never want to do, and it's a mistake again that I seem to keep doing again and again, and I, and, and I forget to check, is shadows. So I was in um, town, um, Torshan, which is the capital of the pharaohs earlier. So let's go and have a look where I was just shooting a shot that's got some shadows in it. Ministry of Finance. So one of the things that you find when you're shooting in the sun, and quite often, more often than not, I miss it, is just shadows that you don't want. So you can see here my shadow, because obviously I'm stood here. But you've also got to watch for shadows caused by your tripod or shadows caused by you in that foreground, because it's so difficult and so annoying when you get it in your shot, because it's so difficult to, to remove it when you go back into Lightroom. So just watch out for that. Just maybe a small move in a different way might make a big difference or just maybe going a little bit low with your tripod so it's not creating a shadow that casts in into your scene. And if you can get rid of these little things, it makes a really big difference. By the way, these are some buildings from one of the oldest functioning parliaments in the world. It's really spectacular in the capital of the Pharaohs as well.
Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is going back to the filter as well and the polarizing filter specifically. So, <laughs> you know, make sure you clean your filters before every trip because there's nothing worse than not having a super clean filter when you get out into field and you're trying to clean it, the light's changing. But when you're using a polarizer, you may not know this, but the first thing to remember is that it only works at best, well, it works best at 90 degrees to the sun. If you're shooting into the sun or if the sun's directly behind you, then it's not gonna have as much of an impact on the scene. It will still change the polarization state of the light reflected off the water, but it's not gonna change the sky so much. Now, quite often I'll get the filter out of the bag and just hold it up and then just twist it like this just to see what it's gonna do before I put it on my camera and mess about getting all my other bits out. But a polarizing filter is unidirectional, so it'll only polarize light when it comes in in this direction um, when it's fixed to the camera. So if you do it this way around and look through it, you may think, okay, that's not having any impact on, on the actual polarization of the light, but it won't operate in this direction. It'll only operate in the direction that it's meant to be fixed to your camera. So it's an easy mistake to make if you just get it out of your bag quickly and hold it up. So try to avoid that. Okay, I hope you found that useful. I'm gonna nip back to my studio now because I want to print some things out, some photos out from this trip. And I wanna show you those, those actual prints rather than just show you as digital files on the screen. And I'm also going to announce the competition winner as well, who's won the tripod. So I'm back in the studio now and I printed out some of the photos from the Faroe Islands. And it was a reasonably successful trip, I think, for, for everybody. We didn't have the best light. We had a couple of amazing sunsets right at the, at the beginning of the, the trip and then it went flat. But in the Faroes, you can just deal with flat light because it's just such an amazing landscape. And it sort of works quite well in, in, in that um, light. Before I get onto my prints, I'm gonna show you some prints. I just want to talk to you about a few other things, so little mistakes that, 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 that were made when we were there, actually. So the first one is we were shooting quite a lot of wide angle stuff and with that you have to be super careful with your tripod leg and it's often really easy to miss it. Um, so you know you, you, you're quite often shooting on your tripod and shooting sort of straight down like this and you've just got to be really really careful with your tri tripod leg. So rather than putting it that way around with the tripod leg sort of pointed that way, do it this way and then you, you get a little bit more um, space in your foreground there. So the other things that happened all the time was batteries and failing to charge batteries. I've done this so many times where you forget what batteries you've got. So a top trick that I've got is I make sure that I number my batteries so that I know which order to, to put them in my camera in and I try and sort of rotate them in the same order so that then, then I know if I'm on a certain number the ones previous to that probably need charging when I go back to the hotel room. And I've also got two pockets in my bag for charged and need charging. So I don't get them mixed up. So then when I get back, I just do all my need charging ones at the end of the day and charge them up. And then the final mistake is one that, again, I do, I have to admit, a, a time and time again, which is, and I think this is probably only an, an issue with a Mac. Basically, I delete my photos and then forget to empty my recycling on, on my Mac. So the sort of image, um, when you delete your photos, it, 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 st it stays in there anyway. But also when your camera looks at that SD card, it still thinks the image is there because you haven't deleted the record to that image by not deleting your recycling. So it looks like you haven't deleted your, cam your photos on your, on your camera and then you haven't got that space. So you've either got to delete other photos or try and work out a way of, of getting that space on your camera, which is really frustrating if you think you've got an empty SD card. So I hope these mistakes have helped, you know, the ones I spoke about when I was in the Faroe Islands and these, these three now. Before I get onto the competition winner and, and talking about these prints, I just wanna briefly mention Squarespace, which are sponsoring this video. So if you don't know already, then Squarespace are a fantastic way of building your website. And there's one thing that they've just released, which is appropriate, which is the ability to go and 
edit your site um, on your mobile. So it's a mobile app now. And you can go in and here I, I, can, I can see all my site and I can just go in and edit it really easily. So if I wanted to go and change my about me section, I can click about me and then just click edit here. And it allows me to go and just change the text. So now I can just change that bit of text there really easily, which is, which is so fantastic. You know, be able to update your site and make any maybe corrections, especially for me when I'm out in, in other countries quite a lot and, and maybe I don't have access to my laptop. You know, and this happened really recently because I've got my calendar um, pre-orders and there was a mistake on there and I needed to correct it. And I just had my mobile and I thought, oh, I can't do it. That's when I saw that the app had just been released. So I downloaded the app and I could, I could make that change. It was a bit of a lifesaver really. So if you need a website, then you can go to www.squarespace.com and you can get a trial and then if you want to go forward with that trial then go to forward slash Nigel to get 10% off or type offer code Nigel in at the checkout and you get 10% off. Okay so what I want to do now is talk to you about these photos, these prints from the pharaohs. I've got four prints which I, I really like and I'm going to talk about those and then I'm going to talk about the competition winner of the Benro tripod over there. I know lots of people have been asking when that's gonna be. I'm sorry it's taken so long to do it. I've been traveling a lot, but I've got the winner. I'm gonna announce it at the end of this video. Okay, so let me go through these one at a time. So um, so this this one's the, the, the first one. So this one here is an amazing location called Kalsoy. There's actually a lighthouse here as well. What I really like about this is it was taken with a long lens and it was quite sort of overcast. And rather than just include these cliffs here, by having so, some mid-ground interest here, then it, it made a really big difference. And I, what, what we've done is added Mass Peter Everson, who was the other workshop leader um, here. Now, if you haven't seen Mass's YouTube channel, you've got to go and check it out. It is amazing. He is one of the best photographers I know. He produces stunning images of the Iceland and the Faroe Islands and other, other locations. And he really, really is a good YouTuber as well. So go and check out his YouTube channel. I'll put the a link to his YouTube channel at the end of this video. So I really like this. I think it's really simple. It sort of gets the essence of the Faroes really, really well. So that's, that's that one. So I was talking about the sunset that we had. Um, and yeah, we had, we had this amazing sunset on, I think it was the second day actually. This is a real big hike here at Dragonir. And you can see here that we've got this channel and I was waiting for the waves just to come and go over here. It's probably about a half a second to a second exposure. Luckily somebody climbed up on this rock here. If you're watching the video, just make, make, write in a comment if, you, if, if you're that guy, because I, I didn't get your Instagram account and I'd like for you to see this. We've got the sunset there and then I've just tried to get separation between the elements at the top there. So I'm really pleased with this. I think it's worked really, really well. And it just looks fantastic printed as well. The next one was right at the end of the day. So we, we this was about midnight, where we were just watching the sun, Just you can just see here, just set. And oh, it's so amazing when the sun's setting and you know, you're know you quite north. So the Faroe Islands is 62 degrees latitude north, and the sun just sets because it's sort of so it goes like this and then comes on a flat plane like this. So it sets really, really slowly. And I've not tried to lighten the cliffs up too much, but it was just catching the light, it was just catching the top of these clouds here, which was really good. And I've just included this little bit of land here just to balance off this, this section here. So yeah, that, that worked really well. I was really pleased with that print. And this is my favorite image from this trip actually. And it, it's, pretty, it's a pretty simple one. So this is just a road that just goes off into the distance. And um, if you've ever been to Scotland or Skye or Iceland, then there's a lot of roads like this. And, and you know, I, I think the Faroes and Iceland and Scotland have got a lot of things in common in terms of their you know, you just feel isolated and remote. And I think this really captures that really well. The road is lovely S-curve winding through. I've got a couple of cars on it as well, just to give an idea of scale, although the road does that pretty well. And then the greens and the greys of the rock just work really, really well. And yeah, it's fairly simple. There's, the, the, it's interesting that there's, I always say that you need a subject. I think the subject in this case is the road. Um, which just cuts all the way through diagonally through the through the image. The textures are good. 
and it was quite flat like this. I did quite a lot of processing on this in Lightroom, but it doesn't look overdone. I think, I think it looks really good. I really, really like it. And I think I'm gonna put this one on my wall. Okay, drum roll. So the winner of the Benro tripod is Lucas Reisinger. So well done, Lucas. I'll reach out to you. I've got your Instagram handle, so I'll reach out to you and I'll send the tripod, you know, we'll exchange details and I'll send the tripod over to you. I'm gonna have more competitions coming forward as well. I've got other things to give away, really good things. So make sure you stay tuned to my channel to check out those competitions. I think there's gonna be one next weekend. And I've got so much great content as well to, to, to share with everybody. And um, you know, adventures in Norway and other things like that. Okay, thanks ever so much for watching. And until next Sunday, bye. Running out.